set to fail. Mark Bailey from Fig Securities is looking into this as we speak. So, um, pretty interesting situation happening there. Um, however, what do you sort of anticipate will be the likely fallout when it comes to market reaction, considering the fact that the no vote was widely anticipated? Uh, good morning, Dean. I think I think that's exactly right. Um, I, I guess in terms of uh, how you saw the uh, the Austrian election uh, going, I think that was probably more uh, in terms of a knife edge there. And again, you know, it was kind of more mainstream parties that would have been happy with that election result with the uh, the defeat of the far right candidate. But in terms of Italy, I think it's it's still probably a, a bit of a shock, uh, as you're seeing in terms of the euro and how that's. Um, positioning and going through and then it's the knock-on impacts that you're going to see more broadly uh, in terms of the Italian banking sector you know it's going to be difficult for um, that uh, capital uh, injection to go through in terms of the the government support for that you know will Renzi uh, resign as well he has talked that he, he will do if he loses uh, and then that again probably throws up a likelihood of another European election next year on top of the the French the German and the Dutch elections that are already due to be held so again more political uncertainty inside the uh, European Union and interestingly as well we have the ECB let, uh, lead, mm. that meets uh, later this week as well on Thursday you know about I think about 90 percent of uh, Euro European economists there are expecting some kind of additional QE whether through extension or an increase of uh, pace of purchases or both or maybe a, in kind of broadening the net of assets that it currently purchases as well and I think probably um, this uh, election uh, so this referendum results if it uh, does prove to be correct and we have uh, the, you know, the kind of notorious difficulties of predicting this in Italy and the exit polls have been wrong several times before so let's not get too far ahead of ourselves but if it does actually uh, result in a no vote then that probably does push the ECB to act in terms of increasing those uh, you know 80 billion uh, euros a month purchases or extending it from maybe another six months or so from uh, from March 2017. Yeah I think it's also interesting to note that uh, exit polls were unreliable when it came to the US election. Um, they've also had a history of big misses in Italy. So whilst we are obviously watching the euro and uh, the commentary coming from these exit polls, it's by far not a done deal when it comes to the ultimate outcome of this Italian referendum. But when it comes to the ECB, as you mentioned, they do meet on Thursday. Whether or not it will uh, determine to extend its QE problem, can we expect a market reaction either way, given all of those uncertainties you alluded to? Yeah, look, I, th I think if the ECB doesn't do anything and just says we're just going to, um, you know, stop the QE as expected, as, as forecast in, in March uh, next year, then I think that would be a huge shock for the markets. And, uh, you know, I think there'd, uh, there'd be a risk off trade, certainly within Europe and probably more broadly. I think the current expectation and consensus is certainly for some additional monetary stimulus uh, as we've talked about for them in the ECB on Thursday and if that's not forthcoming I think that would be a bigger shock to the market than the uh, Italian referendum result but you know so I think that they will look to at the very least uh, add another six months to the program taking it to September uh, next year and then obviously when you get to that time frame again you know the the ECB will look at see whether the markets can support because I think one of the interesting factors again more broadly for the global economy in terms of the non-farm payroll figure was actually the the wage growth which was actually negative at minus 0.1 percent took the uh, year over year change to 2.5 down from 2.8 and that's a key stat that I look at and also a lot of the central banks look at in terms mm -hmm. of you know whether there's going to be inflation coming through the system and I think that would have given um, you know obviously I think the Fed hike is baked in because the the other parts of the equation there on the non-farm payrolls were such that it's uh, it's very likely that it will move um, in in December and I think in terms of but that flight path in terms of the blue dots I think will be a lot more gradual than people expect and probably in actual outcome will be similar situation to, to last year where we were expecting four and actually they're probably actually only going to do one but in terms of that impact for more broad broadly and global central banks as well I think it does just allow them that leeway because there's no inflation coming through uh, in the system. Yeah so the the, and the US Fed has consistently said they would take the chance of running that economy a little bit too hot um, to get that inflation story going. Okay, Mark, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dean. Mark Bailey there joining us from Fig Securities. We have to take a short break here on Sky.